Or is it's going speaking to the right. right now because there is a resistor who just came out in the New York Times and is anonymous and it says they're trying to control him. Go. Point after point after point. If you look. All right, that was the president at a law enforcement event, kind of going off script a little bit because of this major bombshell in the New York Times. This is an op-ed published anonymously. It says, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. I work for the president, but like-minded colleagues and I have vowed to thwart parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. So this isn't a Democrat. Greg, who's come out and says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Bernie bro and I'm, I'm, I'm mole. This is a, I guess, a Republican uh, who wants the administration to succeed. They want a strong military. They want tax cuts. They want deregulation. But because of the president's character, because of the president's style, uh, style and um, ideology and the way he kind of changes things and they say his immorality, right. they are not carrying out directives and are and he says many of them many officials and appointees believe this same way and they're protecting the country from Trump like he's a child. All right, there's two points to make here, one that's very specific and one that's general. In this editorial, we want the administration to succeed, they say, because he's already made America and safer and more prosperous. What more do you want than that? Because you don't like his personality? We have already made America safer and more prosperous. Yeah. This person, like, what else do you want? You just proved his deep state, you moron. All right, so here's what the, the greater thing. I've been a boss. I understand how people talk about bosses. Your bosses are never normal. They're mercurial, they're demanding, they're often infantile. Because except you don't, our boss, except, so I believe <laughs> he's one of the greatest bosses in American right. history. I want to, I want to, here's the point, here's the point, and I, and I would extend this to Woodward's book as well. Let's say you had cabbage for, for lunch, Jesse, and I said, you're gonna regret that. Woodward would write, ah, Greg Gutfeld just threatened <laughs> threatened uh, uh, Jesse Waters. Regret. The fact is, if you follow somebody around on their behavior, and I, in, let's say, uh, this is Bob Woodward describing my day. He just insulted Dana Perino's dog an animal that she loves dearly. And then he made a joke about her height, which I imagine she would be sensitive to because she didn't respond. She, she seemed shocked by it. Then he yelled at the producers about a segment. Then he demanded a cough drop from the floor director. And then he started talking to himself and singing about food. I have described my <laughs> afternoon. But the thing is, because somebody like Woodward in the New York Times takes these things literal, and not in context about how a person is, how a boss is. They are completely clueless. Mm -hmm. Each one of us could have this treatment done by somebody who takes stark, literal interpretations of behavior that is out of context. He, Woodward is a stenographer. He is not a great journalist. But Let's let be clear. Well, let me just say, I think he is a great journalist. And I think that He doesn't to get people. Juan, he doesn't get people. If I insulted you, he would write as though I did something horrible to you and said it, well, if it was a joke. Well, that would be wrong. In that yeah. case, he'd be wrong because he'd lack context. Yes. But I don't think that's generally the case with Woodward. I think he's a pretty good reporter. I think he's a very good reporter. But second thing to say is the piece that was written anonymously in the Times is written by somebody who works for Trump. And who Trump, also leads to the Times. I don't, I don't mind, but I'm just saying it's written by a Trump person. A and, senior and, official right. who they know well, a person leaking to the New York okay, Times. Okay, but my point to you, Greg, yeah. is that if you look at Unhinged, right, which is the Omarosa book, you look at the Michael Wolff book, the, Fair Michael and Wolf Fury, person. right, this seems to be, from someone with more credibility, the same story. The same kind of behavior. Here, behavior. this guy saying, this is the anonymous guy saying, we're doing what we can to preserve our democratic institution while thwarting Mr. Trump's misguided impulses. And, it, and talks about this is not deep state. He says it's steady state. I know, that's right. Well, he's taken it upon himself to say, as an unelected person, that <coughs> the will of the American people doesn't matter. Because even though they elected President Trump to be the commander in chief, to be the chief executive, and to do the things that he campaigned on and follow through on his promises, I have elevated myself above that, above the commander in chief and above the American people in this democracy, and I'm the adult in the room, and I'm going to do what I think is necessary for the country instead of what the commander in chief 
believes is that's necessary. That's what you. From the that, wait, let me this ask you. This is what that op-ed says. Let me ask you a question. Juan, no, no. I'm, I don't know what's going on in this question. administration, but that's kind of scary. Well, not to me, but let me ask you a question. Well, not to you because it helps. You. No, it does not. You, you think that? Look, I'm an American. I want the best for the country. Pre Trump is my president. Well, I believe that. But I got to ask wants you the a question. The country too. When he, when Trump behaves in this way, you don't have any fear. Look, I think, and listen, I'm not going to speak for the president, but the president is obviously unorthodox. He uh, shoots from the hip, and I believe a lot of people in the and when administration he lies, are, are not question. used to that when, person oh. as the president. He's a boss. I, I, you, I'm going to defer to Dana on this because she worked in White House, but I think the larger question is whether people working for admi an administration and leaking out pieces of information and publishing anonymous op-eds is really good for the country. And there yeah, are serious the questions. To this thing? Here. Well, and there are serious questions about the New York Times publishing this because the Society of Professional Journalists has a very long code. They say avoid lurid curiosity. There's all kinds of things you're, you're supposed to avoid. Their explanation for publishing an anonymous op-ed is pretty thin when it comes to the justification for this. Hmm. It used to be that you use anonymous sources very sparingly because you had to make sure that the information was reliable and that people understood where it was coming from to have the broader context. They're treating everybody who happens to be against Trump like a whistleblower, and it's damaging to people who actually want to come forward and have those protections to root out real corruption in the government because this op-ed wasn't published to expose some kind of new revelation about Trump's behavior. It was published because the New York Times agrees with it. But you don't